Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the installation of the Colm inline 230cc engine. We are now starting to work on the beginning or front portion of this aircraft and moving our way backwards. So time to get started with the Colm install again. Let's dive back in. All right, so first step here is we need to put a, a washer against the firewall. Thanks Dave Wilshire for this tidbit of info. Now, because we got everything set here, our front support and everything, uh, we can't just add these washers to the firewall. If we do that, our mounting up front here will be off and uh, I'm not taking this out and redoing it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a recess in the area where the mounting happens. We're just gonna use this bit here. I think this is called a Forzner bit. And uh, we're just gonna create a recess, enough for the washer to sit in the firewall. And then we'll use high saw and get this all glued in. And uh, that'll be a nice solid base for our actual mounts to fit against. Now our mounts are the exact same size as the washer. All right, so we got all of our holes done here or recesses except one. In order to get to this one, we needed to cut the excess duct out. So that excess duct came out about a half inch, three quarters of an inch. Mm. Just took a Dremel, cut that off, and that part's all good. So now we can do our last recess right there. All right, so we've got our washers installed there, held them in place with some bolts, basically put high sole in that area, a little bit of lubricant on the bolt, uh, screwed it all in place, got it centered, and we're gonna let it sit now and do its thing. So we can't really do anything with the engine at this point, so we're gonna flip the aircraft over and start working on some of the mounting trays. Uh, the kit includes this, uh, this series of mounting pieces here. This is what they look like. We've already used one of these for a spacer. So what you do is you glue this all together and this allows you to put zip ties behind there and zip tie the ignition in place. So uh, I'm gonna get this piece mounted inside the fuselage. It's gonna get tucked on the side right here. Gives you a reference point. And the uh, spark plug wires come through this side and connect to each of the cylinders. So it does work like this. It does work like this. I'm gonna actually mount it sideways in the aircraft. So sitting exactly like that. Uh, reason being is in this orientation, the zip ties hold it uh, up and down but we'll put foam in between there anyways. So, but that's how we're gonna get that mounted. So I've used high saw to glue this together and tack welded it with some CA. So what I'm gonna do now is just uh, roughen up the inside with a bit of sandpaper, wipe it off with isopropyl alcohol and get that epoxied to the sidewall. Right, so we got this uh, area sanded out here. You can kind of see the remnants of the sanding and we've got that high salt in place. So when that cures, that'll be a nice solid mounting. So as of right now, we can't really do much to this, uh, this fuselage cause we can't move that. Now I've tack welded that in place with a bit of thick CA, but really not a whole lot that we can do. All right, so while we're waiting for the engine stuff, we're gonna start working on the hatch uh, for the canopy. Now there really is, um, well, there's no hatch uh, latch included with the kit. So this is one that we have or supplied. And there's no, uh, I don't know, instructions of course on how to do this. So what I like to do first is kind of just get all my uh, dimensions and everything done up. So I kind of just hold it in place, figure out where it's gonna fit. Uh, some of the important things is you wanna make sure that when you pull this latch all the way back, it's actually pulling the pin out of the area where it's gonna contact the fuselage enough. So that's what this horizontal mark is or this cross mark right there. And then the forward motion, that one there, or forward mark is the actual movement of the, uh, the latch or the pin that opens and closes it. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna sand out this area just a little bit with my Dremel and uh, we're gonna get that opened up just a slight amount. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my Dremel bit, uh, my small little one, and I'm gonna create a little slot. Now I've marked this out by holding it up at, on the light, but you can actually see the seam through the, the part of the aircraft. So I'm using that as my center line here. So we're just going to our small little carbide bit. And now if we're lucky, this will just fit in place. So we wanna make sure that with this pin pulled all the way back, 
that we will be sitting behind where this is actually butting up to. So you can see here that we are still inserted just a little bit into the fuselage. Now we can do a couple things. We can extend the slot, which I don't really wanna to do too much. The other option is we can just cut this off and sand that down a little bit to make that little pin shorter. That's what we're gonna do. All right, so we got everything figured out with the slot. So what we're gonna do now is, is simply mix up some high saw and uh, get this installed. We're gonna tack glue it in place with a spot on the front and the back with CA. And then we'll go in and we'll fill in the high saw all around the tabs to get it nice and mounted. All right, so we got our hatch uh, installed there. Uh, we've got it high sawed in place. It's locked in place with some CA, so it's not going anywhere while I play with this. Uh, the high saw is still wet. Um, but ultimately what you're looking for is when I retract that latch, you wanna make sure that the latch is not still sticking out. That's gonna cause you an issue. And then we've got enough poking out so it's gonna have a nice grip inside that fuselage. All right guys, it is the next day so we can pull our bolts off that we're holding our washers on and start progressing with the engine portion. Now, before we progress with the engine portion, we're gonna flip the plane back over and we're gonna get the tail section finished up uh, because we're done in the tail section. We've got all of our wiring run forward, so great time to install the tail gear. All right, so now that we're getting into the final engine install, I'm cutting down the uh, some of the stock bolts. Now, these are way too long. Um, this is the correct length here. So this is gonna vary depending on how you're installing it, but we're cutting all the bolts to fit perfect. All right, we got our uh, engine standoffs reinstalled, uh, nice and permanent now. So we're gonna flip the aircraft over and get the tail wheel installed. All right, so airplane is flipped upside down. We have the tail wheel and the whole assembly, I guess, all bolted in place hooked up the, uh, the cable, extended this guy out. Now, we gotta get the doors hooked up for the last time. So that's the whole point of doing this. Now, if you remember, I did put a clip down there in the fuselage right at the bottom. So that is our clip to hook up to the wire that opens and closes the doors, which is this guy right here. So what we're gonna do here, I've seen a couple other guys use uh, an elastic band. The problem with the elastic band is it's not, eventually it's gonna get hard and crusty and fall apart. So we're gonna use string. Now it doesn't need to have any elasticity. What's really important is when the doors are open, this piece of wire stays in this position right here. So when the gear retracts, it actually catches on the tail wheel. If it doesn't, then the, then the doors just aren't gonna close basically. So that's the whole point of that string. So what's important is it keeps that, uh, that wire straight up and down when the doors are open. All right, so we got the tail wheel all installed and everything adjusted. So down at the bottom there, you can see the string that we installed. So that keeps the wire in place nicely. And here's a quick shot of it in action. Beautiful. All right, so while we got the plane upside down, we're just installing the front hatch here. Uh, these are all the small screws that came with the kit. Not sure what they're supposed to be used for, but we're using them for the hatch. So we've got a whole bunch of screws holding that hatch on. Uh, figured to go a little bit uh, heavier on the screw count because this obviously takes a lot of force in the whole front engine area. Um, made the decision to install the equipment, so the electronics on the top portion here. So um, if you need to service it, obviously having this thing upside down is gonna be the easiest. When the plane is sitting upright, you won't see that, but it's okay. We don't really need access to that stuff. So we're going to take the stock to carf uh, pieces of wood here. We're gonna glue them together and then we're going to high saw this onto the fuselage. Now, the reason I'm using two of them is because we want a, a decent amount of structure there. We're gonna have a gyro installed on here. So we wanna make sure that there's no random vibrations or anything like that. So that's what we're gonna do next. So we just use CA to glue those two trays together and uh, we need to get them installed now. 
with some high sol. So one thing we need to do is check the levelness of the tray position in relation to the airframe. Now, obviously when the airframe is sitting on the ground, the tail is gonna be very low, but we're more concerned about the flying position than anything else. So a very handy little tool is our little uh, digital protractor here. So what we can do is we can set it to the canopy or cockpit rails. That's pretty much zero degrees there. It's 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And then we can take that and hold it there. And you guys won't be able to see that, but it's 0.3 is what it says. So right now that tray is level in relation to the cockpit area, which I'm going to assume this is level. And the other check we can do is we could hold this up here. And this is, I don't know if the engine uh, area up front here is level, but we're pretty stinking close as well, 1.8 degrees. So what we'll do now is we will roughen up the areas where that tray contacts the fuselage and we will high saw it in place. Uh, what I'll probably end up doing is also putting some fiberglass uh, along the edge here. I'm thinking that would be a good idea. All right, so we've got our tray glued in place. You can see there we added some carbon reinforcement and uh, fairly straightforward. I actually ended up using West Systems uh, 610 for all of that stuff. So we're gonna let that set. I did uh, CA it in place just in four of the four corners. So we can actually turn the plane up over the other way around and still work on the engine install. All right, so we've taken the hatch back off because we need access for the engine. We are ready to bolt this engine in place. Now we've given this a little bit of thought, making sure that we've got everything ready. Uh, we put our blind nuts in. This is for our choke servo. So there is these pre-made servo brackets that come with the kit. Um, this one obviously has the two holes that match up. So it's for the choke servo. So we're gonna be able to bolt this in from the inside. And then the other thing I did was change all of the lines on the engine. Still need to tie wire that one, but we've changed all the lines. The, the original Tigon line that I used, uh, this last piece was too short. So I just swapped it all and we've got a nice, uh, a nice decent setup here now. Left all the uh, linkages off to control the choke and the throttle. So I believe we are ready to bolt this girl in. Let's see. All right, what a chore. So this is definitely something I do not want to do on a regular basis. Uh, getting this engine installed was probably, what would you think, Ward? Oh, an hour? An hour. Yeah, like it's probably easier the next time, but it really is an hour to get this engine uh, out might be 45 minutes, but to get it in is about an hour. Uh, and that's not even worrying about any of the connectors or anything yet. So uh, it's a real chore, but it's in. And I'm gonna say this is for the last time because I don't wanna take this thing out again and have to do anything to it, so. So obviously we've got lots of different things to work on here. We've got to, uh, to worry about our lines for the starter motor. We've got our RPM uh, main sensor here that gets run back to the uh, ignition unit. Uh, we've got to worry about all of our uh, control rods for our throttle channel and choke. We've got our fuel line sitting here. So there's lots of little bits and bites to figure out still, but this is a huge accomplishment to get done. Uh, we did have to open up a little bit of the uh, top cowl piece to clear a little bit. Had to make a little bit of an adjustment on the engine uh, after gluing those uh, washers into the firewall, but otherwise it's back exactly where it was before. Really happy with the engine install. Looks amazing. All right, so we flipped the plane over. I would dare to say that uh, building one of these aircraft without this hatch would be an absolute nightmare. Uh, you think about this hatch and so they don't call for this in the aircraft. Uh, you have no access to any of this stuff here, 
right? Uh, with the hatch cover off, obviously, obviously we've got great access to everything, uh, to our spark plugs, so all those can be changed. The lifter covers can be taken off. Our adjustments for all of our needles can be done. So this, I would say, is one of those mandatory things to, uh, to add to this aircraft. Um, it also gives us good access for our linkage for our throttle setup, which is also very nice. I didn't think about that, but lovely to have that. So I think the next thing we're going to start to work on is our linkage setups and our servo setups for the engine, for the throttle and choke because that's our next most complicated thing. So let's work on that and get that done. All right, so we have the choke system installed. Actually, the choke is very easy. The, uh, the servo mount lines up perfectly. The hole for the choke lines up perfectly. And we have a ball joint and a clevis on that side. Uh, the actual motion's not very much, so I think one direction we've got 41% on the servo. The other direction is 9%. So. And there's kind of a shot there, if I can get it, of the setup. So that one wasn't bad. The uh, throttle servo is going to be worse because it doesn't line up with... First of all, it's going to be worse because it's hard to get to, but uh, it doesn't line up with any of the openings. It's actually further away, so that's kind of sucky, but uh, we'll deal with it. So we're going to figure out uh, what we're going to do here on the servo for the throttle. So for our throttle servo, we're gonna be using a MKS 9930, uh, good quality servo. It's gonna be dealing with a lot of vibration and a lot of crap from that engine, so. All right, guys, working on the, th on the throttle servo here, this has uh, been an uh, interesting challenge. So we're gonna mount the throttle servo there, and it gives it a fairly decent uh, clean shot. We did have to sand a little bit of the, the L groove out uh, but what we're doing here is the throttle servo is now plugged in and operating, but it's hooked up to the linkage. So we've pushed the linkage all the way forward towards the plane, which is max throttle. And what I'm doing is gluing this servo box in place while that's all at max throttle. Uh, throttle off or low throttle will adjust the servo travel. This servo travel right now is 100%. So we do have more uh, movement on the servo if ever needed, but it's it's not. I mean, that's that's the 100% mark there. And this engine actually has a pop when it's at 100%. So when you go forward all the way open, it actually has a little resting, resting point. So uh, this is gonna make for a good setup mechanically. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll mix up some high saw now, glue this to the sidewall. We've sanded down the sidewall and we'll tack it in place with some, uh, with some, some CA. Uh, just to make sure it doesn't move, but that is the throttle servo all almost set up. All right, so throttle servo is all done. We've got our ignition mounted onto the plate we glued on yesterday. All of our spark plug wires are installed. Again, can't praise this hatch enough. It's a great piece to be able to actually access the engine because I couldn't imagine getting this engine installed trying to have those spark plug wires in, that would be an absolute disaster. So what we're doing next is we're gonna measure where the wing tube is and we wanna have the tank mounted uh, basically over the CG point or we're gonna mark the CG point and mount the tank over there. So we're gonna build some, uh, some tank mounts for this uh, Dubro tank. So we're gonna use, according to the manual, you wanna have a 750 to one liter tank for a three cylinder, three carburetor engine. So we're gonna use a 1200 milliliter tank, so 40 ounces. So it's a little bit on the bigger side, which uh, is totally fine. So, so we're gonna figure out a mount for this, but first let's measure our CG location. All right, we've moved the aircraft over to our flexi spot adjustable workbench, which is great. Uh, one thing we did here last night that I didn't film, but it's cured today, is our tank mounts here. So these are just simply uh, uh, 1 8 inch plywood, aircraft ply that's uh, fastened to both sides. We put a little bit of carbon reinforcement on there so they are stuck stuck. And then we've also got our pressure tank installed back there. That's the 2 liter pop bottle. That is to pressurize our fuel system. So what I did was use silicone to glue that in place and it's nice and solid as well. 
I'm actually kind of happy I waited on this aircraft to kind of uh, put everything in, in place. Initially, I was talking about putting our electronics here, but I'm glad I put it all on the top side so we've got good airflow through the aircraft for cooling purposes on this engine. So tank mount is done. Other thing I had to do was turn the ignition around. So reason for that is we've got our uh, four or five wire connector here that needs to go to the RPM sensor, which is right here coming to the front of the engine. This is very, very short lead. So with that ignition box rotated 90 degrees, there was no way this line would reach. So it has to sit like this. Uh, I could have run this a little bit closer. The problem is you start to get into this kind of odd shaped carbon. So we did tuck that all the way forward with our mount. This definitely works. Our spark plug wires are just long enough. So that all works fine. So we're gonna be using this tank and we're gonna uh, upgrade the fittings on the tank a little bit. So we're gonna use aluminum uh, a tank bung setup, which is going to be nice and strong. And then we'll also be using a felt clunk. Uh, this also did not come with a kit, but good option for this type of setup. So I'm gonna get this all plumbed up and uh, we will then be ready to probably get the tank installed. All right, so our tank's all installed. Uh, we've got our, uh, our felt clunk in there. We've got all of our fittings. Uh, figured out here. Now this is a bit of a special setup, of course, because of our pressure tank system. So really what happens here is we've got our vent line, which is this side right here. So this six millimeter line plugs onto our adapter. This feeds the engine and this is our fuel uh, filler. So that's what the, the T is here for is uh, engine feed fill line. So the vent system itself, we've got this system here, which this plugs into the pressure vessel that's in the tank. We, and we've covered all this in the, uh, the engine run up. And this is the uh, vent to open and close the fuel system. So when you are fueling the, the fuel tank, the Festo valve here, which I think will be located kind of in the cockpit area, will be open like that. And sorry, open like that. Uh, once the fuel tank is full, you close the, uh, the Festo line and then the other portion of this that's already installed in the, in the airplane right now, you fill up with your, your hand pump and uh, that pressurizes the, the fuel system because the, the two liter pop bottle holds pressure. So our other end of everything is installed right there. You can see that was all pre-done previously, but we've got that all piped in. So that end of the other side that I was just holding that plugs into this one-way valve. So that allows fuel not to go this direction, but air pressure to come out. And then we've got this line here, which is our pump to uh, pump air into the system. So we've got the airplane flipped back over. Our tank is now installed. Now, when I installed the tank, I used some silicone plus some zip ties. So once that, uh, it's actually polyurethane, it's not silicone. So once that polyurethane cures, um, it should do a really good job holding everything in place. Of course, the zip ties as well. Now we're not doing a cockpit in this aircraft, so we're going to do everything accessible from the top hatch here. Now, of course, I've seen lots of other builds on the internet, well, not lots, but a few, and some guys are putting on and off uh, power switches and all that stuff up here. I don't wanna to have to take this cowl off in between flights. I think that's uh, a bit unnecessary. So we're not gonna do anything underneath the cowl here. It's all gonna be accessible in this area. Now what I did is we're gonna do the canopy next. I put a little mark right there. Now how I got that mark was I installed the canopy like this, the pin pulled back, and then I just took the pin once this was all centered, kind of pushed it in and slid it up and made a little scratch. So that tells me exactly where we need to put our hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole, but it's gonna be a little bit below the black mark. And then we'll slowly adjust that up as we need to. All right, so mounting the canopy here, we've got our back hole done, that's all finished. Uh, now we're just working on the front pieces. So I uh, drilled holes on both sides and we've put a piece of rod through there. We're coming through the front 
uh, a little bit, about uh, maybe quarter of an inch or so on both sides. Make sure we've got nice penetration there. And uh, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape this in place. Now you can pre-fit everything like we've done here and the canopy is fitting perfectly, right? So we're all good there. Once we tape this in place, then we're gonna glue this down or glue the pins and just leave them be, right? And then of course, once we're done, if we need to do any adjustments to the holes, we can do that, but we probably don't need to because it's all gonna be 100% fit. To take this canopy off when we're all done, we'll push the slide pin forward canopy will come backwards. So should be a beautiful fit. So our canopy pins are glued in place and we're just gonna let that sit and rest and do its thing. Uh, I did mix a little bit of cotton flock in the 20 minute high saw there. Uh, the purpose of that was to make sure that it didn't move. Uh, the other alternative is you can just let the material set up a little bit uh, and become just slightly uh, hard or set off and then uh, it'll stick nicely. All right, and I can't say enough about this flexi spot table. Really, really nice. I love being able just to automatically raise this table up. So just to give you guys some perspective here, this table is now at my belly button height, which is higher than any other workbench I have in the shop. And it makes working on like this engine uh, area really simple. So as we continue with this engine install, I'm kind of just working at it piece by piece. So uh, working on the baffle system here, these are all pieces that come in the kit. It slides in here. Needed a little bit of adjustment, but we are good where it is now. We can screw it down. There's a couple pre-done screw holes. So this is kind of the primary piece. And then I also did up the speed control for the starter motor here as well. So I just put some extensions on there, installed the factory ends, and this is ready to install. So we're gonna run the speed control back to about this location in the fuselage and we'll just velcro it to the side of the fuselage and i'm not going to worry about the battery leads at this point because we're going to do that based on where our cg needs to go so what i need to do now is we need to flip this over so i can work on the temperature sensors for the cylinder heads all right so we're kind of getting into all the small little details of the build here but uh so i put the temperature sensors around the first cylinder and the third cylinder. The first cylinder is A, the third cylinder is B. Now our temperature sensor only has two sensors. So I figured that's the best way to do it because then we'll have a A temperature, which is the furthest away, closest to the cooling, a B temperature, sorry, that's backwards, uh, furthest away from the cooling. So that'll give us the uh, variations in temperature across the three cylinders. So we've got those lines all installed. Now these are all high temperature silicone lines. Uh, you just wrap the sensor around there, you push the red uh, compression piece and it just holds it in place. So we've got those installed. Uh, everything's nicely zip tied, uh, compacted together. Um, this stuff isn't gonna melt because it's silicone. And then we came to this point here and I put some spiral wrap over top of everything. Uh, and, and it all comes through the firewall here. So with our extension for our speed control or ESC, uh, I've got a piece of fireproof material here. This is about a foot and a half of this. And this is gonna go over top of the wires just as it goes through the engine block area and comes out through the opening where the cooling is. All right, it's canopy time. So we've got our canopy here all freshly taken out of the bubble wrap. Uh, our hatch is all done. We're good and solid there. Comes off very nicely, goes on very nicely. So that worked out beautifully. Um, in order to get the, uh, the, the front glass on here, I just took a Dremel and we sanded down a whole bunch of the foam. The foam was actually coming out uh, to the edge of the, uh, the opening here. So sanded that down so we've got a, a better surface to, uh, to glue to. So what we'll do now is we'll just cut the uh, canopy out on the basic shape. So uh, get rid of all the excess material. And then from there, we'll start to cut our individual pieces out. So obviously there's the front piece, the back piece. Most of this doesn't get used. All right, so we've got our canopies fitted here. We've uh, installed everything with magnets. And now we will take some glue, some zap canopy glue, and just run it all along the perimeter 
and let that set up. Now, when you do something like this, when you do canopies, you really want to install them while they are curing. That is super important. This is probably the least important canopy I've ever done because it's so small. But when you're doing a big jet canopy, you really want to have it installed 100% because the magnets and the glass and everything can kind of shift and settle in different locations. So you want to have this installed so the canopy is sitting in its home uh, happy position and then the glass is drying to the canopy shape. That's really important. So we are going to also use magnets to glue or to hold in the front piece here. And then once that's done, we'll get them all glued. All right, so just kind of getting some of the uh, finer details figured out here. So what we're gonna be installing uh, for the ignition power is gonna be an SP06 optical switch. So this is gonna plug into the ignition battery right here. And our power lead is gonna come from one of our receiver batteries. And then we've got our actual on off switch or lead which goes into the, the central box which controls the switch. Benefit of using this is uh, it isolates the battery for the ignition. Uh, we're gonna be using probably LiPo batteries for the receiver setup for the central box. And uh, that's kind of the plan at this point. So last couple things we've done here tonight is we got our uh, SP06 mounted on the side there. That is just mounted to the same Velcro as our ESC for the starter motor. Now I did hook up a four cell battery. I actually tried a two cell battery on the starter motor, wouldn't turn it over. I tried a three cell LiPo, wouldn't turn it over. They recommend a three cell LiPo. You can go up to a four. I did install a four cell LiPo and it did turn it over. Now it kind of hesitates a little bit and then it gets going. So I think with a battery, better battery connection, it should be fine. I was just using like alligator clips, like these little guys right here. So I suspect those were uh, reducing a little bit of the amp draw that we could get. So we got that done. Uh, this is gonna be our fill line here. This is some, uh, some Sullivan fill line and or a gasoline line so this is going to run back to here and then last thing i did tonight so it'll set is i glued a plate down there now that plate is a faux carbon on the top side wood on this side and that's going to be kind of our startup plate is what i call it so we've got our fuel filler line coming there we've got our vent line coming there we're going to have all of our stuff that we need to run the engine our little uh, our little air air pump fill line here for our pressure cylinder all of those things are going to come to that area and uh, so that means all we need to do to run this aircraft is pull the canopy out and we've got access to everything. This kind of stuff is, is generally kind of slower. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of room to put different things. When I'm doing a jet, I'll usually spend a whole bunch of time organizing things, but in this case, we really don't have much options. It's just a matter of functionally running things. The other thing I was thinking about was our wing connectors. Now our wing connectors on the wings are actually right here. So that kind of makes it simple. We can run them to the top of the tank and have those leads coming off, going back to our electronic section, but we'll have somewhere here on the tank to, to have those leads coming off to plug in. So that, that also works out well with the tank being there. All right, guys, and that's gonna wrap up video number four in the Strega build series. Next video is video number five. We will do everything in video number five. This plane will be complete in the next video. So if you guys have any questions or comments, list them down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.